What's happening, dogs? Mr. Allen here. We're about to solve for x in these beautiful rational equations here, and we're gonna list domain restrictions. Now, it's easiest to find those domain restrictions once we have our denominators factored, and it's also gonna help us find our LCD. So let's do that in this first one here. I can factor this guy and get x out, and I'll have x minus five left over. No factoring here, no denominator here. Really, it's just over one, if you will, right? All right, lovely. So what's my LCD? Well, my LCD is exactly that, right? So LCD is the X times X minus five. It's got everything from this one. It's got this guy right here in it, but, uh, and it also has a one, right? So it's there. Cool. Awesome. Fantastic. Lovely. Okay. So what are we do to solve? Well, you can go through and get common denominators here and here, right? And then compare all your numerators or my preferred method. I multiply both sides by my LCD. And what that's gonna do is these denominators here will divide with that, they'll cancel out, and I'll be left with just a single line, no mo fractions. I love when I can get rid of the fractions, right? And I can do so mathematically and legally by multiplying by my LCD. So let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna multiply by X times X minus five. I'm gonna multiply by X times X minus five. And over here, X times X minus five. Right now also might be an appropriate time to list out our domain restrictions. Domain, X cannot equal what? Zero and positive five. Zero, positive five. Lovely. All righty. Let's keep rolling. So now what's going to happen here is this guy right here will cancel with that, right? So we no longer have this guy here. We rewrote it in factored form. And what we've got going on here is boom, gone, boom, gone. Beautiful. I'm left with one. Now I've got, let's see here, this X with that guy gone. So it equals, and it's going to be X plus seven times X minus five. All right. Beautiful. And the last one there looks like it's going to be negative one times X times X minus five. All right. Beautiful. Single line. No more fractions. I love that. I'm into that. Now let's keep algebraing. All right. Let's do it. I made that a vert. Is that a, I don't know. All right. One equals, multiply these together, x times x, x squared. x times negative five, negative five x, seven x, and then I've got negative 35. If you can combine those two in your head on your own and get two x, more power to you, go for it. I usually like to do that, but I'll show it all here for this video. I'm just a nice guy like that, you know? All right, and over here, I'm gonna distribute that in. I've got negative x squared plus five x, and now we can go to town, combining our like terms. Woo! Nice, we're gonna get rid of the quadratics, that's beautiful. All right, equals, and then we've got, um, let's see here, 5x, negative 5x, also gone, leaving me with just the 7x, and then it looks like just the negative 35 there, that's pretty dope, that's pretty awesome. All right, so I'm gonna add 35 over, I get 36 equals 7x, and when I divide by seven here on both sides, I get x equals 36 over seven. Beautiful, fantastic. Wonderful. All right. And that is not part of my domain restrictions, right? Which is zero and five. I, those are the ones that I got to avoid. If I got that, it's called an extraneous solution. See that another time. Uh, for now, X equals 36 over seven is dope. Awesome. And we're on to the next one, dogs. All right. Same kind of idea here. I got to find my LCD. And to do so, I should factor. First one here, I can take an X out and I'm left with X plus one. Okay. Do not forget that, right? Sometimes people see like the X is coming out. They're like, oh, just X. No, there's a placeholder. There's a one there. Don't forget that. All right, over here, same deal. X times X plus one. And this one's already set, ready to rock and roll. So it looks like to me, my least common denominator, it's got to have an X plus one and it's got to have an X. That would take care of everything here. This guy is our LCD. Least common denominator is X times X plus one. And my domain restriction, we'll do that right now. X cannot equal zero and negative one. So it cannot equal zero and negative one. Beautiful. All right. Let's go to town, man. Let's go to town. So I'm going to multiply both sides by that um, LCD, right? I'm going to multiply, sorry, not both, yeah, both sides by the LCD, which would then be multiplied to each numerator, right? Very good. So when I did this, I'm multiplying both sides by the same thing. I can do that. Anytime I want, I can multiply by the same thing on both sides of any equation. I can divide by both uh, both sides by the same thing on any equation. I can add, I can subtract, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides of the equation. But in this case, I'm choosing to do it by the LCD so that my denominators all cancel out. 
So I'm going to multiply by x times x plus 1, x times x plus 1, multiply by x times x plus 1, and x times x plus 1. Lovely. And now we're going to get some dope cancellations here. The entire thing will cancel out with that. Here, once again, entire thing will cancel out with that. And then here, my x plus 1s will cancel out. And now we can rewrite it. It, it takes a bit to stay organized on these. So take your time, be very careful with it, be very diligent um, so that you don't make mistakes and accidentally leave something off. So the first one here is just x plus five, x plus five. Let me draw a little line here, Whoop, keep them separated. All right, equals, and then I've got, let's see here, it's just gonna be one, that's cool. All right, the entire denominator is gone, right? And then over here, I've got that negative, don't forget that negative, right? And I've got x, minus six, x minus six, and we've got that x that was left over. All right, so that's what we're dealing with there, guys. That's what we're dealing with. That's pretty awesome. You know what, I'm gonna rewrite this guy over here with the x first. I think that would be a little bit, um, you know, more normal, I guess, minus x times x minus six. Might help with the distribution, you seeing the distribution there. All right, so I'm gonna distribute that negative x in. I got x plus five equals one minus x squared plus six x. I got a quadratic. How do we solve a quadratic function? All right, quadratic equation. I got to get it equal to zero, right? I got to get it equal to zero, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we can factor it and not have to use quadratic formula. Ooh, all right, well, I want my x squared to be positive, so I'm gonna bring everything to the left-hand side here by adding x squared, subtracting six x, and subtracting one. So I'm gonna have x squared, and then we've got, we're subtracting six x, so minus five x, we're subtracting one, which would give me plus four, positive four there. Beautiful, and now I can find what multiplies to positive four and adds to negative five. And luckily, guys, there is something that does that. It is negative four and negative one. We do not have to use quadratic formula. Thank goodness, that'd have been beefy. I would have run out of room. It'd have been terrible. The whole place would have exploded, I don't know. All right, so now I can just set these guys equal to zero. We got x minus four equals zero, and x minus one equals zero. I am using my zero product property, right? Zero product property there. Anything times zero is zero. So if I can get this factor to be zero, woo, whole thing's zero. If I can get this factor to be zero, woo, whole thing's zero. So I've got x equals four and x equals one. Am I good with that? It's not part of my domain restriction. So both of these guys work here. It is not one that would cause my original problem to be divided by zero to be undefined. So x equals four and one both work. That's awesome. That's dope. Fantastic. That's a whole lot of work, a whole lot of awesome, just like you guys. I will see you later. Like and subscribe. YouTube things. America.